can make it better this year. I have confidence. I shall not be defeated. I shall carry on. I can figure this out. And the way I can figure this out is I'm gonna break it into small pieces. Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Today, we are going to start the planning process. The planning process for my front yard. <laughs> because it has turned a bit chaotic. It has turned a bit messy. It would turn, while well, my husband says, a little bit crazy. And it's time to start making the master plan for whatever this is gonna become. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So if you'd like to hang out as I go along this journey, or you would like to plan your own garden, go ahead, grab a pen, a paper, or grab the planner, and let's get planning. So my first step is big vision. What am I thinking? What's the big idea? And for me, when it comes to gardening, what would make me the most happy is if this garden has a cottage vibe to it. I love the English cottage garden style. Now, of course, I live in Florida. I do not live in England. <laughs> and so we're going to have to figure out how, how does one make an English cottage garden look in Florida. An area that's more known for tropical looking gardens than cottage looking gardens. But the first step for me is acknowledging I want a cottage garden. I want the front to have a cottage garden look. That's what I'm going for. And I would like to because when I garden, besides it making me happy, cottage gardens just make me happy. It's my style. Lots of right styles, but that's fine. And in addition to loving cottage gardens, one of the things that I think cottage gardens really evoke is this like sense of like, it's the transition between kind of the more organized world of your house or cottage, as one might say, and nature. It's kind of this kind of middle ground of like back to nature concept, which goes with like why I love gardening. Because I love gardening for butterflies. I love gardening for birds. I love gardening for my pollinators like bees. So cottage gardens like, and then cottage garden sometimes, it kind of depends where you are in the world, uses native plants or the stuff that feels as if you've just walked into a meadow. So I'm hoping that I can use a lot of Florida native plants to get a cottage garden that helps wildlife for my front yard. That's my goal. That's the big picture idea. Can we do it? <laughs> Who knows? We're going to go through this journey this year and we're going to figure it out. But we're going to just, we're going to just try. Let's talk about what area we're doing. <laughs> so my front yard's huge. Sometimes I think it's hard to tell how huge it is, but it is actually ginormously, it's ginormously huge. There's layers to this yard. So doing a project, I've thought to myself, it's gonna have to be like a bunch of mini projects. And to give you a sense, I'm looking for my drawing page. Oh, here it is. To give you a sense, and I don't, let me be clear, this, this is not drawn to scale. Here's my house. Here's the sidewalk that kind of curves around my house. And then there's my driveway. And then here's my ginormous vegetable garden. Do you guys see this? Ginormous. Here are my three raised beds. And even this, I don't feel like, as noted, not drawn to scale. There is a huge chunk of land that comes like, actually probably would be more accurate to put it all the way out to here. It's a huge section right here. This is huge to, to give you a sense of scale. This is the garage, which fits a whole car length plus some. This fits at least two car lengths. So just to give you an idea, the whole front yard is at least three SUV car lengths long. <laughs> That's a lot of space. I feel like it's probably even longer than that. That's three SUVs parked very, loosely. <laughs> so that's the first part. So when I was thinking about plants for what could maybe go that are native or not, here are some of the things I was thinking. I don't know if they can all fit in here this project, but I'm gonna tell you ones I'm thinking about. <laughs> first up, silver buttonwood. I talked about this in a recent video, the how to attract birds, native plants video. I feel like this is, it's just screaming English cottage garden. It can be cut into like more boxy type shrubs. It can be trained up like a tree, but here's the thing, it's got this silver green. And I feel like that's just, it's feeling, it's giving like, we're off in a fairy land. And then it gets those cute little berries, those like raspberry candy berries. And that's one of the things is I feel like if you're in an English cottage garden, you're in those cool tones, you're kind of like bouncing between cool and like nice greens. The other one, I don't know that this would ever fit in an English cottage garden, but I just kind of want it, is a fiddlewood. Um, I've heard great things about fiddlewoods forever. And then I put out that video 
about attracting birds. And then people were saying like, fiddlewood smells so good, like jasmine. And I was like, oh, my, my favorite scent is like citrus flower. Cause basically like citrus flowers, gardenias, jasmine all have a very similar smell. That's like my favorite smell. I love that. And if fiddlewood has it, then I want fiddlewood. Cause it's native. Also, can I get a tea bush hedge in? Can I figure out how to double duty for my bees? Cause also tea bush similar to like that, um, silver button one we're in that kind of gray silver green tones but also it gets like pinkish tones with its little flowers all over the place so i feel like yes could we make a hedge out of it i don't know maybe and then i just wrote on my wish list cottage garden <laughs> make it a cottage garden and then oh i went to that plant of palooza that i mentioned in some community posts if you don't pay attention to community posts you should because there's polls and quizzes and all sorts of fun things happening over there but at Plantapalooza, the star of the show when it came to native plants, beach verbena. There was a nice, gorgeous patch of beach verbena. I have a little bit in. It's finally taking off now that I've opened up the sunlight in the front yard. Can we get more of it somehow? Let's try. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, tell me which one of these is like your favorite. <laughs> I now realize I wrote this plant on here twice. It's because I'm longing for it so much, and that is coral honeysuckle and I'm looking here because it's still alive even though I lost the trellis that was above me it still goes on I need to get which brings to the next point which is like I need an arch trellis I need an arch trellis back here I looked at old videos I need that back in my life how do I get it how can I get my coral honeysuckle hanging on it again we need that if I can figure out a way to get flame azalea or pinkster azalea oh, our native azaleas so pretty i've tried it twice before killed it both times not the flame but the pinkster but if we could figure it out i want that oh have you guys ever seen our native salt marsh mallow every time anyone has it on the florida native garden group i'm always like i need that i want that can i figure out a way to have that do you want it because i want it it's on my wish list. And then I was thinking just more cone flowers. Because every time you look at a cottage garden design, I feel like people have got cone flowers. It doesn't matter where they live. They've got echinacea, like purple cone flowers. And of course, everyone loves black eyed Susans. But here in Florida, both black eyed Susans and purple cone flower are native. And I had some really good purple cone flower this last year. But then also orange cone flower. I can still see the orange cone flower. Like it's died back from the flower part, but the plant's still going. And in my head, I'm thinking like, is there some sort of border or is it like clumpings of that coneflower? Cause man, when they bloom, they bloom. And the purple coneflower and the orange coneflower bloomed most of the year. Black eyed Susans didn't, but based on their location, they might've if I didn't shade it all out from that giant tree that we took out. Does anyone have camellias? I want a camellia. I want a pink camellia. Cause I feel like similar to the gardenia, it's Florida friendly. If I could make that work in my yard, I feel like and then I was reading online that they can actually bloom in the winter time, which nothing wants to bloom in the winter, right? I mean, there's stuff that blooms in the winter. That's not true. I'm like literally looking at my neighbor's yard. I'm like, bloom, bloom, bloom. <laughs> that one's a great bloomer, but like camellias prefer winter time. Okay, on my wish list, we need clear borders. That is Ben's. I asked Ben, I'm like, oh, we've walked the garden a couple times and I'm like, what do you want? He's like, I'll go with what you want. And I'm like, it's your yard too. What do you want? And he's just like, I don't like how everything mushes together. I will, I'm like, so you want like clear sections and borders? He's like, yes. And I'm like, okay, clear borders. I, I don't know. I don't know what edging material we'll use. Please share what ones you like. Plus would fit, fit the, the, the Kaj vibe. I know some of you have already shared with me. Keep sharing. I'm looking at tons of the pictures. I have no idea. I don't have a clear vision yet, but I keep looking. Okay, crazy idea. What do you think? Because I saw this video on dig, plant, water, repeat. I don't remember the name of that channel. You know what I'm talking about. She had a cottage garden tour of someone's house and their house was turquoise. Now my favorite color is aqua. And I was like, could we paint our house Robin's eggs blue? Ben's kind of on board. I just think like it make the plants pop more. I love the whole contrast in that video. Hopefully I've got a little clip here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Isn't that gorgeous? Should we paint the house? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm putting it on the wish list. <laughs> and then because, ugh, you know, you gotta think about blooms year round. Blue eyed grass, when it's blooming, it just makes me so happy. And I realize my, what's it called? 
salt and pepper plant got really bushy and though everything was shaded out it went over the blue-eyed grass the blue-eyed grass has like doubled in sizes in the places it survived where my neighbor's contractors didn't run it over but where it did survive it's like doubled and i'm like oh, could we get more of that in our life how need it want it oh and ocean blue morning glory i have realized the ocean blue morning glory is not a good spot where i put it three years ago wow it's been a long time since i did that first native project not a great spot for it it does not bloom to its full potential maybe that's solved by just getting a trellis here and running the existing plant just up it i miss this trellis i do the one that got taken out by hurricane ian oh i want a trellis if i get a trellis i'm putting blue ocean morning glory or ocean blue morning glory, whichever that one i need more of that on oh, the southeast sunflower for the fall i want to get that i want more liatris i want well, of course, I'm going to continue to have goldenrod. We need all those things. I love blue sage. I want more of that in the garden. We had a good patch going, and then when we took the tree out, it all got run over. So I want more of that because I feel like my flamingo pink tropical sage is doing its thing. And when we had them combined together, and it's loving its life now that's getting more sun. And if I can get the blue sage in there, I think we can have a wonderful thing happening. And maybe with beach verbena, I don't know. We have to figure it all out. And then can I make a button button sage hedge? Cause I love that button sage. It's got that like bubble gum smell and who doesn't love adding smells to their garden? So that's like my random wish list. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> One, did you get any ideas from my random wish list? And two, do you have things that you think I should be adding to my wish list? Cause this project's gonna take a while. So we have time for you to give me ideas. <laughs> But let's go around because it's a lot of space. And I think one of the things that I need to do as I think through this huge plan is how are we going to break this up into sections? Because it is a huge space. Do you want to think through that? Let's think through that. Okay, so you guys can see my yard is rather huge. <laughs> there are actually lots of layers to it. If I kind of come more like this, I think you can get a better idea of like, how deep some of these sections are so you can see like from the vegetable garden to the road is probably about 10 feet deep just that not even the vegetable garden just like this is probably 10 to 12 feet deep and of course it's like even i don't know what 20 25 40 feet across that's like a lot of space that can handle a lot of stuff we hit the vegetable garden i can tell you these trellises are 12 feet deep so we know, I think it's like 20 feet deep for this whole vegetable area by, uh, I don't know, this is three feet across, that's three feet across, that's two and a half, so six, these are each three foot walkways, so what, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, so this is at least 20 feet across, so it's like 20 by 20, but I feel like it's a little bit longer, so maybe 30 by 20 deep. So that's how big that space is. That's huge. And then there's this like whole circle hedge thing area going on. We got this whole space right here that's doing its own thing. So that's a whole section. And of course there's where I used to have a trellis that was beautiful and then it collapsed during a hurricane. Boo. And then we have this section. This section, I don't know that we really need to do. I, ben and I agree that we kind of like this and this and maybe we want to do something in this corner because it just kind of feels weirdly empty and then this it's kind of blocking that window a little bit and we already kind of there used to be a plant that blocked this whole window which we just removed this last year so we like that we can see out but uh, i feel like something maybe needs to happen here what y'all think and then there's this section which desperately needs help i know we know yes these raised garden beds we're fixing all this we know that the firebush hedges filling in nicely actually taking really good hard prunes one of the things over here that i don't like this looks very weird, like that there's not any plants closer to the wall. There used to, when we moved in, used to be a row of holly, then a row. This actually was a part of a whole row, which is really weird to think. We just cut it back into a circle, but it used to be a row of American holly, then a row of this variegated shufflera, then a row of Indian hawthorn, then a row of something else that I don't remember, and then a ground cover, like a, the jasmine ground cover that's not cute, doesn't get cool flowers on it. That's what used to be here. <laughs> People who lived here before, when I say they like that kind of like uh, French manicure, it was like hedge on hedge on hedge on hedge on hedge. It was the weirdest thing. It blocked the window. I don't know. But since we removed it all, we have this like weird gap, which the peacock flower used to fill, but now it doesn't fill anymore. So I don't know. I feel like something needs to happen to this section. I don't know what, but something. Also, this apparently is breaking because this is what happens with wood in Florida. It's 
bowing out. So now all the slats are falling out, which is great. And then oh, our jasmine hedge, which has been here be since before we bought the house. And guess what? If you thought to yourself as I was walking over, that looks like it's leaning. You are correct. Does it look like it's leaning from this angle? I feel like actually it looks pretty straight. It's not. It is literally collapsing at this point. This is what happens when you don't coat metal properly. This is the leg. It's not attached to the ground anymore. This is a T-post I put in a year or two years ago to just give it some support. So you can see how much it's leaning. This is the T-post that's straight up and down and here's actually the trellis that's collapsing backwards. Also another leg that's broken off. Uh, I think three out of four legs are no longer attached to the ground. Because of that, we are gonna have to do something with this trellis this year because it, the one that's literally here is not. It's not staying up. If it wasn't for the T-post and I think how thick and old the jasmine is, I think it would have collapsed the ground already. So we got to do something about that one way or the other. My thought process says, of course, y'all give ideas. Whatever we do with it, we'll wait till it blooms because it should bloom February. So we're getting close. It'll bloom. Once the blooms are done by mid-March, whatever we're going to do, we do. So that's the idea. But yeah. Hedges on hedges on hedges in this front area. Yeah. And we have this section. This used to be a beautiful butterfly project. And then my shade tree shaded it all out and everything died. Or it spread into other locations in its efforts to go elsewhere. So we have all this space. What to do with it? And we have this tree. What to do with it? And then we have bananas. They'll get cleaned up once it warms up. Right now is not the time because it's too cold out for them. So we'll let this be self-insulation. But there's all this space. We need to do something with all this space. Hi, I know we're gonna find a good place for you. But right now you just hang out here. So now you guys got a sense of like how big the space is. So my thought was to try to break it up into smaller projects. Otherwise it's gonna get super overwhelming. But I wanna keep a mind of how all these projects work together to create an overall cottage look. So I started to lay out the other day, kind of 12 sections. Well, the first way I thought about it is like, what if you just think of like that front layer, everything that's on the one side of the sidewalk. So if we think, so what I'm thinking is like, what if I focus first on this area and how all that looks together? I think it's still gonna need to be broken up into multiple projects just for the sake of the fact that like I only can do so much at a time. Also, I think it'll help me as I, as I plan stuff just to like not get overwhelmed. Cause like I showed you, it's like a huge amount of space. So, okay, so here's what I'm thinking is we've got all this space right here. I'm thinking we break it up into projects, different projects. So like project one, we just need to fix those, those beds. We just need to fix the beds. There's nothing else to it. We just need to fix them and we will do that. We'll just fix them. But when I looked at old videos, I used to have a wildflower garden in front and I liked many things about it. There were some opportunity areas that I didn't like, but one of the things I liked that I think add to the border look is we used to have the pavers make a pathway there. And then for reasons we remove the pavers and they're just sitting there right next to it. And I was like, gosh, once we fix those beds, we could put pavers back and redo that wildflower garden. I think another project is uh, this. This could be another project. Just getting a trellis in and then redoing either side of the trellis. Another thing that's not looking very symmetric is either side of the garage. Either side of the garage, we have one of the old topiary plants from the previous owners. And then on the other side, we have this trellis that was left by them and I've moved it to multiple locations. I'm wondering if that's where we could put some camellias. So I'm calling that like the camellia garage project. Then I think, I think we have to separate the projects just because one, I think it's gonna take a lot of work, but also because of the timing of the jasmine blooming, I think whatever thing of trellis we get, like whatever material we get two or make two, whatever we do. And we do one on this side and we do one, and then that way they're the same material. We'll pick a different material than what's over there. I don't know how long that one lasted. I think the question is, do we do the same vines on either side? Do we do different vines? I don't know, food for thought. That's five projects. <laughs> then I think we do a project with that circle head. 
So what I like the idea of like, you got this very structured circle hedge and then stuff coming out of it. But maybe this is where we could take advantage of some of those tall wildflowers, like the sweet golden rods, the Southeast sunflowers, the liatrices that can kind of like flop over and almost like treat it like it's a vase. And then everything's kind of coming up and out of it. Last year, whatever I did, and I think slash into the year before, year and a half, last year and a half, there was a lot going on up there. I think we need to give it some space. I need, I think we need to just have like some flat greenery. I think we might just need to put in a lawn alternative for most of it and then just be okay. But maybe, I think I talked about this a little bit late last year is maybe we do some semi-circles in the corner on either side and like just to have some more wildflowers. So maybe that's the thing we do. So maybe we do like one semi-circle because I don't know that they need to be symmetric. The house, like I said, the house isn't symmetric. I don't know, what do you guys think? But maybe we do them as two separate projects because I think we're gonna have to take some stuff out, put some stuff in. There's definitely some wildflowers that have gone nuts in reseeding and that's gonna have to be get, gone. Like we're gonna have to get that under control. So I definitely wanna break them into two projects. We'll need to figure out borders for them. Yes. So I'm thinking those are two projects. Then we have that area that used to have a butterfly garden that did really well for like two, three years. And then because of shade issues, it totally died out. But I don't know because that space is so, there's so much already happening there. Maybe it just needs like a little hedge, something. So I'm calling it the South Pine Project something to kind of just make it okay not let weeds all grow in so maybe something there and then i think there's a question mark around that north pine where that variegated shuffler is that's kind of weird like i was saying with the wall maybe something there maybe we take this the shuffler out maybe put something behind it i don't know maybe do something different there i don't fiddlewood i don't know i like the peacock flower the butterflies like that. the big butterflies like that peacock flower that's aka dwarf pond sienna um it gets high and that's what the big like giant swallowtails monarchs cloudless sulfurs like they like the flowers that are 15 feet in the air so we're gonna keep that but like does it come up and through something i don't know and then oh i've got like i've just got pots <laughs> So I think there's maybe going to be some wildflower pot projects. I was thinking we move the one, I have like a really nice one, again, that the previous owners left behind. They left a lot of stuff behind in the garden. Let me just be clear. We had to clear out a lot of stuff, but there was some stuff that was like in really good condition that I was like, oh, okay. And there's a really good one. It doesn't have anything in it. I think I used to grow strawberries in it, but those strawberries have either been moved or they died out. And now it's just an empty pot. That's a good pot. I'm like, well, maybe we do a wildflower project and I have an idea of where we might put it. So if you want kind of like a rough idea with these, <laughs> I did a quick sketch because I'm not committed to it yet, is this. This is what I'm thinking are all the projects. I did them in color codes. Yes, I like highlighters. <laughs> so this is what I'm thinking. There's a lot of project ideas. Oh, and just creating like a proper veggie border. We put the mulch down, but like maybe it needs something a little bit extra to oomph it up. But I think that's like, that's a lot of projects. That's 12 projects. What do you think? What do you think of this list? <laughs> this is crazy. So I feel like today was less of like a detailed plan because I'm not like, oh, this plant goes here, this plant goes here, which I've done many videos for you guys on. But today was just like, how are we gonna tackle that? All of that. I feel like we got a lot more to do planning wise. We've got a lot more to do, but now I feel before I did this, I was feeling very overwhelmed about how to get this under control to the point that Ben even said, should we hire someone? And I was like, no, I shall not be defeated. I shall carry on. I can figure this out. And the way I can figure this out is I'm gonna break it into small pieces. And I think by breaking into small pieces, learning from my past, what worked, what didn't work as well, what just did okay. I think we can tackle this and I think we can make it better this year. I have confidence. So are you guys looking forward to this? I'm excited. I think we can do this. I think we can get a cottage garden going in Florida. It's cold out. I'm in a puffy jacket, but hey, what's the best time for big projects? When it's cool out. So if you've been thinking about converting your garden, whether it's to a cottage garden or some other type, and you want to have a step-by-step -step guide to how to think about doing some of these bigger style projects, check out this video right here. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye.